Chapter 44, Bybanks. We're back in Bybanks now. My father and I are living on our farm again, and Gramps is living with us. Graham is buried in the Aspen Grove where she and Graham got married. We miss our gooseberry every single day. Lately, I've been wondering if there might be something hidden behind the fireplace because just as the fireplace was behind the plaster wall and my mother's story was behind Phoebe's, I think there was a third story behind Phoebe's and my mother's, and that was about Graham and Gramps. On the day after Graham was buried, her friend Gloria, the the one Graham thought was so much like Phoebe, and the one who had a hankering for Gramps, came to visit Gramps. They sat on, the, on our porch while Gramps talked about Graham for about four hours straight. Gloria asked if we had any aspirin. She had a grand headache. We haven't seen her since. I wrote to Tom Fleet, the boy who helped Graham, when the snake took a snack out of her leg. I told him that Graham made it back to Bybanks. But unfortunately, she came in a coffin. I described the Aspen Grove where she was buried and told him about the river nearby. He wrote back saying that he was sorry about Graham and maybe he would come and visit that Aspen Grove someday. Then he asked, is your river, is your river bank private property? Gramps is giving me more driving lessons in the pickup truck. We practice over on Gramps' old farm, where the new owner lets us clonk around on the dirt roads. With us, with us rides, Gramps' new beagle puppy, which he named Huzza Huzza, Gramps pet the puppy and smoke his pipe as I drive, and we both play the moccasin game. It's, it's a game we made up on our way back from Idaho. We take turns pretending we are walking in someone else's moccasin. If I were walking in Peavy's moccasin, I would be jealous of a new brother dropping out of the sky. If I were in Graham's moccasin right this minute, I would want to cool my feet in the river over there. If I were walking in Ben's moccasin, I would miss Salamanca Hiddle. On and on we go. We walk in everybody's moccasins. And we have discovered some interesting thing that way. One day, I realized that our whole trip out to Lewiston had been a gift from Graham and Gramps to me. They were giving me a chance to walk in my mother's moccasin, to see what she had seen and feel what she might have, have felt on her last trip. I also realized that there were lots of reasons why my father didn't take me to Idaho when he got the news for her death of her death he was too grief stricken and he was trying to spare me only later did he understand that i had to go and see it for myself he was right about one thing though we didn't need to bring her body back because she's in the trees the barn the fields gramps is different he needs graham right there he needs to walk out to that aspen grove to see his gooseberry one afternoon, after we had been talking about Prometheus stealing fire from the sun to give the gift to man, and about Pandora opening up the forbidden box with all the evils of the world in it, Gramps said that those myths evolved because people needed a way to explain where fire came from and why were why was there evil in the world. That made me think of Phoebe and the lunatic. And I said, if I were walking in Phoebe's mo uh, moccasins, I would have to believe in a lunatic and an axe-wielding Mrs. Cadaver to explain my mother's disappearance. Phoebe and her family helped me, I think. They helped me think about and understand my own mother. Phoebe's tale, tales were like my fishing in the air. For a while, I needed to believe that my mother was not dead and that she would come back. I still fish in the air sometimes. It seemed to me that we can't explain all the truly awful things in the world, like war and murder and brain tumors, and we can't fix things. So we look at the frightening things that are closer to us and we magnify them until they burst open. Inside is something that we can manage something that isn't as awful as it had at first seen. It is a relief to discover that although 
there might be ax murderers and kidnappers in the world. Most people seem a lot like seem a lot like us. Sometimes afraid and sometimes brave, sometimes cruel and sometimes kind. I decided that bravery is looking Pandora is looking Pandora's box full in the eye as best as you can, and then turn into the other box, the one with the smooth, beautiful fold inside. Moma kissing trees. My Gram saying huzza huzza. Gramps and his marriage bed. My mother's postcard and her hair are still beneath the floorboards in my room. I reread all the postcards when I came home. Gram and Gramps and I had been been to every place my mother had. There are the Black Hills, Mount Rushmore, the Badlands, and only car that I still have a uh, heart. That is still hard for me to read is the one from Coraline, the one that I received two days after she died. When I drive Gramps around in his truck, I also tell him all the stories my mother told me. His favorite is the Navajo one about is Dantelihi. She's a woman who never dies. She grows from baby to mother to old woman, and then turns into a baby again. And on and on she goes, living a thousand, thousand lives. Gramps likes this one, and so do I. I still climb the sugar maple tree, and I have heard the singing tree sing. The sugar maple tree is my thinking place. Yesterday, in the sugar maple, I realized that I was jealous of three things. The first jealousy is a foolish one. I am jealous of whoever Ben wrote about in his journal because it was not me. The second jealousy is that I am jealous that my mother had wanted more children. Wasn't I enough? When I walked in his moccasin, though, I say, if I were my mother, I might want more children. Not because I don't have, I don't love my Salamanca, but because I love her so much, I want more of these. Maybe that is fish in the air, and maybe it isn't. But it is what I want to believe. The last jealousy is not foolish, nor is it the one that will go away just yet. I am still jealous that Phoebe's mother came back, and mine did not. I miss my mother. Ben and Phoebe write to me all the time. Ben sent me a Valentine in the middle of October that said, "Roses are red, dirt is brown. Please be my Valentine." Or else I'll frown. There was a P.S. added. I'd never written poetry before. I sent a Valentine back that said, "Dry is the desert, wet is the rain. Your love for me is not in vain." I added a P.S. that said, "I've never written any poetry either." Ben and Phoebe and Mrs. Cadaver and Mrs. Partridge are all coming to visit next month. There is a chance that Mister Berkeley might come as well, but Phoebe hopes not, as she does not think she could stand to be in a car for that long with a teacher. My father and I have been scrubbing the house for their visit. I can't wait to show Phoebe and Ben the swimming hole and the fields, the hayloft and the trees, and the cows and the chickens and the blackberry. The chicken that Ben gave me is queen of the coop, and I'll show Ben her too. I'm hoping also for some blackberry kisses, but for now, Gramps has his beagle, and I have a chicken and a singing tree, and that's the way it is. Huzzah, huzzah.